This is The Coacherian, where coaches go to grow. Coacherian, like a terrarium for coaches. It's the pocket-sized podcast for leaders who coach to gain skills and confidence. Welcome to The Coacherian. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Coacherian. If you haven't listened before, we're Dana, Wendy, and Gary. This is the smallest podcast spread over the longest distance, over 5,000 miles from San Diego via Dallas to here in London, England, where it's currently a bit snowy and pretty cold. Um, So welcome, Dana. Welcome, Wendy. This week, we're talking about the subject of should I train to be a coach? And I'm actually thinking of a couple of people I'm working with at the moment who are leaders in the organization I work for. And they're both thinking about this exact question to enhance their leadership. They're thinking about whether they should do some coach training along the way. So for the two of you, where were you when you first thought about training in coaching? Gary, I think I was at work as a leader and I was currently using strengths and had been coached by someone But it wasn't until probably a year later after I learned that leadership was coaching, I said, oh, this is something that could be a part of my my future. And so then I started kind of, I didn't intentionally plan it. I just started doing it. And, And so I think that was something that was, it was one of those roads I took that I didn't really plan, but it just happened. And did you know it was coaching at the start? When you were doing that, did you know that was coaching? No, I thought it was because I have individualization, my strength. So I just naturally am curious about people and want to find out more about them and hear their stories and understand them. So I didn't feel like it was coaching at that point. Not until I got into some, you know, coaching classes and in more training did I realize, oh, there's an art to this. There are kind of some guidelines to this. So, yeah, it was it was really interesting path. And Wendy, how about for you? When when was your first introduction to coaching and coaching? Well, yeah, and I, there were a lot of different paths that kind of converged, but you know, I have to say I was a uh, rec soccer coach for a long time, <laughs> and starting when my kids were very little, and it was interesting because even in that process, there were conversations around what is a coach. And uh, that I that I wouldn't fully appreciate until later uh, of how much that played into even business coaching. But then as a foster parent, I started taking classes. Uh, we I, one class I took was called the coach approach. And it was how, you know, these these kids coming into your home weren't uh, in most cases weren't raised in your home. I mean, in, in, you know, certainly you can have some kids come in and then stay with you for a while, but most of these kids were new to your home. And so how do you build trust with them and in such a way that they uh, want to uh, learn from you and that they want to um, grow with you and, and all of those things. And so, that was very interesting because I started using some of those same tactics with my own daughter and uh, she noticed and she would say, wait, why aren't you reacting to what I am throwing at you? Why are you just listening? <laughs> and why wh- she noticed a change in my approach, right? The, this coach approach. And I realized how beneficial it can be in so many different parts of my life. And so eventually when I did my master's, uh, I was then, I then received some official training for business coaching. And that was where I think all the paths converged. And it's really interesting. I can I can hear when you're describing that. The thing that was noticeable that was different was the listening. Yes, it was less about a reaction from me and my input and more about just listening and, uh, you know, certainly responding sometimes, but responding in a less... Well, okay, I can say with a, this was a teenager at the time, a less combative way, a less argumentative way, uh, and just a more, you know, curiosity. I think I've used that. I think I've said this in another 
episode, but I, the, the way to go for me is just to trade judgment for curiosity. And that feels like my, a bit of my coaching mantra. We really love that. Um, I think I always instinctively did quite a lot of things that I look back on now with better understanding and say that was elements of a coaching mindset from quite a young age, actually. Um, but it was never formally structured and I never really understood what coaching was. Um, I started formally professionally coaching um, about three, four years ago now. Um, but even then, I didn't really understand fully what coaching was until I did, started doing my formal training. And when I did my formal training, I remember the very first hour of the very first day in the room with people. And they put up around the room these, on these different whiteboards, his coaching, his mentoring, his training, his consulting, his performance management, his counseling or therapy. And I went, oh, they're different, aren't they? And hands down, it's the most impactful hour I've had in my entire coaching career. It's just that appreciation of what it is when you're coaching and what it isn't. And now I'm in an organization, I'm working with people who are leaders who are not necessarily trained coaches. Some of them are, but, but most of them are not. Um, and we talk about how do you have a coaching style conversation as a leader? And it still comes down to those basic principles about how you listen and how you respond. So the conversation we were having this week was, you know, about a particular AI bot and the AI bot, you can ask it a question and it's really surprisingly human in the way it answers it. But typically you'll ask a question, you know, should, should I do this or that? And it says, well, the data says 7% of the time you should do this. That's, that's, you know, AI bots are trained to answer questions. And of course, as a coach, if you're coachee or as a leader, if your report or your colleague asks you a question, often the thing to do is not give them the answer, even if you know it, because that's not the coaching response, because coaching is about getting the best out of, out of the individual. So how do you both find um, when you're starting to get into the coaching style in whichever context, changing the way you'd respond? when somebody would ask you for something or ask you for an opinion or ask you to solve a problem for them. Is that hard to do? Very hard. But I also think once you can flip that switch in your brain, it's so freeing. It, it feels so good to know, I don't have to have the answers. I don't have to solve all the world's problems, right? I, I get to, to just listen and help this person come to the answer on their own. And Wow, that's powerful. And Dana, for you. I really think that it's one of those things where you have to kind of, I, I call it, you know, situational leadership, right? So different people are at different levels and they're at different parts in their careers. And I think as a leader, just understanding first where this person's coming from and then what approach am I going to use to guide them and be their guide and not be. The old Dana would have like, oh man, you should do this and this and this and problem solve and, and really just sitting on my hands and ask, learning to ask powerful questions and learning. I think the most successful coaching session is when they've come to the conclusion themselves, you've just been there, the person on the hike with them, you know, in, as they say in coaching, you're, you're not in the driver's seat, you're in the passenger seat. And what kind of what kind of things are you telling the driver? What kind of things are you asking? Are you sure you want to turn there, or would you know? Would you want to go a little further? You know, it's those questions that are so powerful. I think through yeah. my career, I was tends to be in roles where I had a lot of problem solving, decision making, or decision recommendation to, to do. And I really noticed when I started to adopt more coaching style conversations that I had to quite actively switch off the part of my brain. That was going, no, that's what we should be doing. That's that's obviously the right answer. Because one, that's not helpful for the person that is trying to figure it out for themselves. And two, you might not be right, even though you think mm -hmm. you are. And you might not be right at all. You might not be right for them at this moment in their context. Um, and I remember specific moments in specific conversations that are more of a coaching style where I figured that out and I and I thought we've come to a different place from where I would have gone if I was doing the thinking. Um, my 
coaching supervisor talks about the role of the of the coachee as the thinker, not as the coachee. Um, and and it plays you as the coach or the leader more in a role of somebody who's creating space for the thinker to do the thinking that the thinker needs to do. Um, and it's quite powerful to strip yourself away from the doing in that conversation, that kind of way. So uh, for me, I think one of the reasons why this this podcast is so impactful, I think, is because it's it's not about saying you've got to be a qualified coach. You've got to do years of coaching, um, you know, training, although that can be helpful for, for many people. But without huge amounts of training, but understanding something of the mindset, you can you can achieve so much more in um in, in what you're doing with your with your the people around you, your team, your colleagues, your your superiors. You don't have to be coaching downwards all the time or across. Sometimes you're coaching upwards. Dana, you've been talking about that before. I think it's really coaching intentionally and not just coming in the room, not being prepared um, and thinking about who am I coaching? What are they going to need right now? And how can I help them? So I'm going to ask you both to think of one word that embodies the coaching mindset for you. Um, So Wendy, if you could pick one word for the coaching mindset, what would you use? Oh, man. Uh, okay. You're going to have to bear with me and this is going to require, I, I'm going to give you a word, but it's going to require a little bit of a story really fast. And as we record this, you know, we're nearing the end of the world cup, uh, time, all of that stuff. So soccer's high on my mind. So when you said, what's one word, the first word that came to my mind is soccer. And that, so there, there needs some explanation there. And part of it is that I was a soccer coach for my kids for many years. But here's the thing about soccer, right? You will notice all of those World Cup coaches, they're not out on the field or pitch, as you call it there, uh, playing. They coach their teams before the game and then their players go and play the game, right? Like, and you don't see these coaches. It's different than other sports where other sports, the coaches are on the sidelines screaming at their Mm -hmm. players, which is ridiculous by the way. But, uh, that doesn't, you don't see that these coaches are standing very like poised. They're quiet. They know that their players know what to do. And it's in their players' hands to do that, right? And and that, I feel like when we coach, we are just helping our coaches be their best through whatever means that makes sense for that person. And they're going to be the one out there in their, you know, soccer game or of life or whatever and doing their thing. And so they need to feel confident in that and not like you're going to be yelling at them from the sidelines. That was one of the best one word answers I've had in a really long time. (laughs) Sorry, that was the first thing that came to my mind. You've got, we you've got high communications so that you've got to tell the story. <laughs> I had a lot of words for that. You did. Yeah. It was good. It was Dana, good. Dana, if you feel free to explain your one word answer. I, I will. My one word is intentional. So I think it's just really thinking intentionally that the way that I might coach you, Gary, is going to be different than the way I'm going to coach Wendy. It's going to be different than the way to coach you know, everybody. And I think um, we can't come with a one size fits all style. So being very intentional and taking the time to think about study the person you're getting ready to talk to and conversations and being intentional in taking notes and being intentional in recapping and, you know, all the things that come around coaching. But I think intentional is my word. I love it. And my, uh, my word is in your answer, which is time. And mm-hmm. I think that the longer I coach, the longer I'm in a coaching space with people that I work with, the more I appreciate the value of time mm. and taking enough of it to do the thinking that you need to do. And maybe that's a nice place to land. Maybe that's a nice place to land. Um, I've really appreciated mm. this conversation with both of you. And hopefully you listening in, you've you've appreciated something that, that, that we've been nattering about as well. Um, if you've enjoyed what we're doing here on the Coach Area and then do follow us uh, on our podcast and pick us up on social media, reach out to us on LinkedIn and leave us a review. That would be a great thing to do. Tell your friends about the Coach Area and listen in next time. Thanks so much, Dana. Thanks, Wendy. Talk to you Thank soon. Thank you. This has been another episode of the Coach Area. 
Follow, like, and subscribe to our content to receive updates on future episodes. Join us again soon in The Coach Area.